the myth of the, the having to go overseas to get stem cell treatment. That's just not true. I think you can get just as good of treatment, if not better, when you stay in the U.S. Well, of course, it depends on who you go to, what kind of provider you go to, right? What kind of products are they using? And what kind of training have they had? Because there are, you know, unfortunately, some doctors who heard from a rep from a stem cell company telling them you can make a lot of money doing stem cells and this is what you can do, this is how much you use. And so they don't have a background knowledge. They just know they were told to put this into the, you know, in, in, into the syringe and that's, they can make a lot of money. And, and that's really not the right way of approaching medicine as a physician. You don't take directions from a, you know, pharma rep or a tissue bank rep. Uh, you want to learn your basics, understand why and what you're doing for the patient and learn all the, techno the techniques behind, you know, around it because so many are doing the wrong things. You know, they are giving people IV infusions and not through an IV bag, but doing an IV push, which can have serious problems of embolism because not only the cells have a tendency to aggregate and form balls, so when you put them in a concentrated syringe, you're not breaking them up with the IV blood filter, then they can really cause embol embolism. And also you're concentrating the cells so much, mesenchymal stem cells have a tendency to cause hypercoagulation when they're too concentrated. So now if you can you know, increase the chance of clot by giving people the cells in too concentrated a form. So these are just two simple principles that unfortunately most doctors are not doing it right. And that's why I have an academy. I really want people to do it right. Um, so that's one thing, knowing your doctor, having had the right training, and is using the right product. What kind of product are they using? Are they using, um, first of all, if they're using your own cells, um, if you're young and healthy, I think there's a good chance that can be very helpful. But just know, the moment you take your own blood, your stem cells out, and you have activated them, when you put it back in the body, they're ready to work. So once they have been activated, there's a finite lifespan. Once they finish their work, most of them will die and you have just lost some of your stem cell supply. So just know that. Not to mention, if you get older, if you have any kind of disease, um, the cells are gonna be less potent. So they will have accumulated more genetic changes, more toxins in the cells. They would have lost certain functions and this has been proven over and over again. Um, their telomeres are shorter, their capability to differentiate is less, they are you know, less able to secrete all these signals to you know, promote changes. They're also less intelligent. They cannot, oftentimes, they've lost the capability of recognizing cancer cells. This is why when we get older, the cancer rate is getting higher and higher and your body is not able to mount an attack. It's like, oh, okay, I see you, your cancer cell, I don't know what that means. So, <laughs> but if you are a umbilical core stem cell, very early stem cell, the moment you see cancer cell, you know, okay, there's something really wrong with you. I think you should not exist. And they can send signals to let to get the cells to uh, go into program cell death. But your own stem cells are just chilling with you, you know, getting old together and not really realizing there are things that it needs to do. And so when you get in, getting those cells out, hoping those cells are gonna help you to fight cancer, um, good luck. Sometimes it's gonna make the cancer grow because it hasn't lost its ability to secrete factors to help things grow, but it has lost certain capabilities of recognizing cancer. So knowing that that's a risk you're taking, and this is why I'm not doing a person's own stem cells because of that concern. And if you decide to use younger cells, which will be umbilical cord, that's the most popular umbilical cord stem cells, Ask your doctor, um, are you using umbilical cord blood cells? Are you using umbilical cord tissue cells? These are the two big camps. They're also amniotic membrane stem cells. Um, what's interesting was that I've used all of them and I've seen research studies on all of them. They all work for something, but not for everything. So what I did in the field is that I put everything together from the same donor. So I'm getting cells from the umbilical cord blood, from the umbilical cord tissue, and from the amniotic membrane. Because I always say God created you know, all these cells for a reason, right? And who am I to play God? 
thinking that I can just give you one of those cells and that's going to be good for everything. When research study has shown that nothing is good for everything and they do work together, there's synergistic, you know, there's, there, there's a collaboration going on between the cells. So I'm bringing all these different cell types. So not only we have a large percentage of mesenchymal stem cells, we also have all these other cells from the umbilical cord blood, which are hematopoietic progenitor cells that can originate all the blood lines, right? It's great for brain health, great for angiogenesis, that means forming new blood vessels. And we also have endothelial progenitor cells, which help repair your blood lining, blood vessel lining, right? That's really crucial for health of your entire body. And um, it also contains all these mononuclear cells, so very primitive immune cells that can help rejuvenate your immune system, which is crucial in how you can fight disease and cancer and aging. So when you uh, use umbilical cord blood cells, you're incorporating all these cells. There are also some mesenchymal stem cells, very tiny fraction. This is why we're using umbilical cord tissue and amniotic membrane mesenchymal stem cells, we just call them MSCs. So these MSCs from the cord tissue or amniotic membrane or the cord blood, even though they're all called MSCs, they're all different. They can secrete different types of growth factors and they can differentiate into different, you know, organ tissue pathways. So, so they're not the same. So if we can harness the powers of all these different types, then we have a very comprehensive product that different cells can work together. I think that's why we're seeing such a you know good success rate in our clinic. Uh